Creepy discoveries are a dime a dozen these days. Today I'm taking you on a tour of some of the weirdest things ever found, from a terrifying Peruvian gravesite to reanimated necro-robots. The Skeleton Pits of Chan Chan In the sprawling desert of Peru, within the confines of an ancient city from the time before the Inca, archaeologists made a horrifying discovery. They uncovered a creepy mass grave filled with the skeletal remains of young women. The ancient city in which the skeletons were found is called Chan Chan. It was the shining capital of the Chimu Empire, a ruthless but highly advanced society. Chan Chan is believed to have been the largest city in the Americas 600 years ago. It may have also been the largest adobe city on the planet. And if you didn't know, adobe basically means that everything was built out of mud bricks. Chan Chan had 10,000 structures with imposing walls that stood over 30 feet high. The structures were tied together through a maze of woven passageways and alleys. Palaces glittered on the skyline, a temple stretched over 100 feet long. This was a truly enormous city, comparable to anywhere in ancient Greece. Unfortunately for Chan Chan, though, they forgot to build their city near fresh water. Chan Chan was founded around 850 AD and reached their height just shy of a thousand years later. It was right after they hit their peak wealth that the water problems came. As many as 60,000 people lived in the city and used way too much water. And with the rise of the Inca Empire, the Chimu didn't stand a chance. They were obliterated by 1470 AD. Like many other cultures throughout Mesoamerica, the Chimu practiced a barbaric ritual of human sacrifice. During recent excavations, archaeologists uncovered a huge burial pit jam-packed with bodies. But they don't appear to be sacrifice victims. Most of them are young women, and none are over the age of 30. Experts think the bodies could belong to elite members of society. They just don't know why the bodies were all dumped in a pit-like trench. And now for number 7. But first I wanted to give a big shout out to David Durbin. Thanks so much for watching and supporting OE. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. The Persian Princess The case of the Persian Princess is part archaeological mystery, part cold case. It's a ride and a half, so hold on to your socks. It all began in the year 2000, the beginning of the millennium. In Pakistan, a unit of police learned of a man who was trying to sell a mummy on the black market for a whopping $11 million. It's not unusual for mummies and coffins to be sold on the black market, but $11 million is an outrageous price tag. So the police had to figure out what was happening, as it seemed like the mummy was very important. The police tracked down the owner of the mummy. He claimed that he'd gotten it from an Iranian who discovered it in the rubble of an earthquake. The pair had apparently agreed to split the profits in half when the mummy was sold, but grudgingly the man handed his mummy over to the police, and they then gave it to the National Museum in Karachi. The initial inspection went over very well. Staff at the museum concluded that the mummy was of the Egyptian style. It wore a face mask and had a golden crown. And on the mummy's breastplate were the words, I am the daughter of the great king Xerxes. Mazareka, protect me. I am Rudagun, I am. Anyone who's seen the movie 300 knows exactly who King Xerxes was. He was the legendary Persian ruler who tried to defeat the Greeks and failed. The mummy appeared to be his daughter, making her a Persian princess. And on her wooden sarcophagus was the image of Ahura Mazda, the god of the Zoroastrian religion. All the evidence pointed to the mummy being a legitimate heiress of Xerxes from 2,600 years ago. At the time, this was a huge discovery. It rocked the archaeological community for a few big reasons. Never before had a member of ancient Persian royalty been discovered. It was such a big deal that it caused diplomatic issues between Iran and Pakistan, who both wanted to claim the mummy for themselves. And while the bureaucrats were squabbling, forensic archaeologists were making startling finds. A couple of weeks after the initial excitement, archaeologists had some bad news. The writing on the breastplate was made by someone who didn't know how to write in ancient Iranian script. CT scans and chemical testing showed that the corpse inside the mummy wrappings was recent. It was actually the body of a woman who died in 1996. Furthermore, it turned out that she may have been a murder victim. Whoever made this thing, they went through a lot of effort to make it look real. The internal organs had been removed, 
and replaced with a powdery drying agent. The woman had suffered blunt force trauma to her cervical vertebrae. It seemed that somebody had broken the woman's neck on purpose. Soon, archaeologists suspected that the fake Persian princess was a 16-year-old who'd been killed in 1996. It was never proved that the woman was murdered. Police in Pakistan did open a murder investigation, but that case closed a long time ago. It's been suggested that if the woman wasn't murdered, then her corpse was pillaged from a grave to be transformed into an ancient mummy. Either way, the whole thing was disgusting. Gruesome Sacrifices Going to church might seem like a drag sometimes, dressing up in your Sunday best and sitting in uncomfortable pews while listening to a sermon, but modern church is a whole lot better than what people were doing in ancient Mexico. Archaeologists have found evidence of a bizarre ritual in which priests flayed sacrifice victims and danced around in their skin. The discovery was made by scientists in Mexico. For the first time, they identified a dedicated ritual site to the god Zipe Totec. He's known in English as the Flayed Lord. He demanded that his priests flayed prisoners or slaves and then wore their skin during ceremonies. It's horrific, but it's a real piece of history. The Flayed Lord's temple was uncovered in Puebla, and it was dated to between 1000 and 1260 AD. You might think it was part of the Aztec Empire, but that isn't the case. It was the lesser-known Popoloca people who built the temple. They were later conquered by the Aztec, who also worshipped the Flayed Lord. Depictions of the disturbing god were found at the site. Archaeologists even unearthed a massive sculpture of the god wearing an extra skin. This is a massive deal, because although the god's name has been found across pre-Spanish Mexico, this was the first time a temple dedicated to him was discovered. Researchers also came across two gigantic stone skulls, weighing 400 pounds each. Plus, they revealed two altars, where they believe the god's unfortunate victims were skinned. The House in the Woods Dave is a professional urban explorer. He travels to rural parts of Canada and searches for creepy abandoned locations. His most recent adventure took him to the most bone-chilling abandoned house in the woods ever, and Dave nearly stepped right into a horror movie. Dave runs a website, Freaktography.com, and in the summer of 2023, he ventured into the middle of nowhere in Ontario, searching for his next big find. His journey took him through the woods, over hilly terrain, to a home that looked like it had been transported into the wilderness from another time. The foundation was crumbling, and the windows were boarded up. When Dave arrived, he found a rickety chair outside in front of an old school box television set. Inside, though, it was even worse. Judging by the wallpaper and items strewn across the floors, the house had likely been abandoned since the 1980s. Everything had been torn apart and broken. There were holes in the ceiling and the windows were smashed. But the creepiest part of all were the dolls. Dolls and stuffed animals littered the floors as if a group of destitute orphans had been living in the place. There was even a Winnie the Pooh book lying under shattered fragments of plaster and ripped paper bags. Dave doesn't know the history of the house, so its abandonment is a mystery. But these are the types of places you can find if you go poking deep enough into the woods. The AI Portrait In 2018, before everyone had access to ChatGPT and instant AI artwork, artificial intelligence was in its infancy. On October 24th of that year, a creepy portrait of Edmund de Bellamy made using AI impressed people so much that it sold for $432,500. It was groundbreaking at the time, yet now, only five years later, anybody could do it on their phone. The portrait was made by someone named Pierre Fortrel. He ran 15,000 classic portraits through a computer learning program. The software soon understood how to create a portrait, and with a newly developed algorithm, it generated the smudgy, weird portrait of Edmund. Christie's auction house initially placed a pre-sale estimate of $7,000 on the portrait. It was the first piece of artificial intelligence art ever to be sold at a major auction house, but nobody could have guessed that it would sell for almost half a million dollars. There was even a bidding war over the phone that made the price go sky high. Looking back at it now, the whole thing seems ridiculous, especially since everyone seemed to understand where the technology was going at the time. Richard Lloyd, the head of prints at Christie's, said that in five years people would likely look back on the sale of the portrait 
and think very differently, and he was 100% right. In case you were wondering who Edmond de Bellamy is, he's nobody. That's the creepiest part. The portrait is of an AI-generated man who doesn't even exist. The Mustang Island Eel Let's take a step back from terrifying archaeology to check out the creepy sea creature that washed up on a beach in Texas. The mysterious monstrosity was found in January 2023 on the shores of Mustang Island. Jace Tunnell from the University of Texas Marine Institute was responsible for making the weird find. Jace frequently combs the beaches of Texas in search of creepy things. He's collected a surplus of dolls and random doll body parts. He's also come across his fair share of rotting sea monster carcasses, but his most recent find came as a surprise, even to Jace. At first glance, it might be hard to recognize the creature. Jace knew what it was, but he's a professional. It looked like a humongous sea snake or like some alien larvae. But Jace said it was an American eel, the biggest he'd ever seen. The American eel is the only species of freshwater eel in North America. They typically live in rivers and estuaries, but are known to spawn their eggs in the ocean before they die. The eel is an endangered animal, nearly gone from this planet because of dam building. The biggest one ever caught in Texas was 42 inches. The one Jace found on the beach appeared to be over 4 feet long. And although they're on the brink of extinction, these eels are clearly still growing. Necrobots The creepiest scientific experiment in the history of science was shown to the public in 2022. Researchers took dead spiders and turned them into necro-robots. Yes, they created reanimated spider zombies that can be remotely controlled. A team of researchers took dead wolf spiders and turned them into claw machines. The idea for the experiment came when one of the researchers noticed a dead spider curled in a ball. That seems to be the thing the spiders do when they die. They curl up in a ball. You've likely seen it for yourself. The researcher then thought, hey, that would make a good robot. Spiders curl into a ball when they die because their joints are controlled through a hydraulic pressure system. That pressure system fails when the arachnid perishes. Kind of like how your bowels can fail when you die, so you soil yourself. It's the same basic principle. Scientists realized they could hijack the hydraulic system in a dead spider to turn it into a machine. They did this by puffing air into the spider cadaver's eight legs. Then they successfully created mechanized claws from the spider bodies. And because spiders are able to pick up objects much heavier than themselves, they could pick up a wide variety of things. There isn't much practical use for a spider necro-robot, but it's a real first step into creating zombie robots. Creepy Roof Tiles The labor market used to be a very different place, as everyone was reminded recently thanks to a startling discovery made in South London. Tom Norderman, the co-founder of a construction business, discovered the handprints of children while retiling an old roof. Tom was working on a house that was built in the early 1900s, and as he was ripping up the old tiles, he was shocked to see the handprints were still on the insides of the tiles from when they were made. The handmade clay tiles still bore the marks of the people who touched them at the factory. It was a cool discovery until Tom realized how small the handprints were. They were tiny, more like the handprints of children than adults. And that was when it hit him. The tiles were likely made by child laborers who were shoved into an old factory. The deeper you dive into why there are children's handprints on the roof tiles, the creepier it gets. In the Victorian era of the 1800s, child labor was commonplace. Queen Victoria ruled England, and kids as young as eight were shipped off to industrial factories every morning. Eight-year-old children worked in the mill, at factories, and in the mines. But they also worked as rat catchers and as domestic servants. They worked for low wages in extraordinarily dangerous conditions. Things were changing by the 1900s, though. In 1888, the Education Act was passed in England that made it mandatory for children to stay in school until 14 years old. But that didn't immediately stop children from working in the factories. Tom isn't a historian and can't say beyond a doubt that the handprints on the roof tiles belong to kids, but they certainly look like it. The handprints appear to be ghostly reminders of the brutal conditions that kids suffered in the workforce no more than a few generations ago. Which of these bizarre discoveries creeped you out the most? 
Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.